Man, we've been killing it. Woo! We've been killing it and killing it and killing it. This second season is the best season thus far. Which do y'all agree? I agree, man. Yeah, but look, I ain't gonna be in there. Wait, 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 wait. You not praying? No, no, no. I, I ain't gonna be in there. I'm gonna cut you off. <laughs> I definitely not gonna be I, I'm looking at you like no, I'm in your house, it, it, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sitting back, relax. I, I, I let you duke it out every single time. Okay, so here we go. Let we gotta open up with prayer before love we get into this conversation. I love it. Let's get it. Anthony. Can you pray for us yes, for this? I can stuff? Lord God, I just say thank you. Yes, Lord. Um, I say thank you for our people that are listening at this moment. I th- thank you for the person that's riding their car right now. Bless your heart, Lord God. Bless the, pe- bless the people that are just delivering, delivering, delivering us to be better in our podcast, Lord God. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for Ernest. Thank you for everyone that is just pouring in their hearts, Lord God. Let this podcast be the best. Let us be the best. Mm-hmm. And God, thank you for always being in the forefront. Yes, Lord. Amen. Welcome to Top Shelf, where we seek truth, opinion, perspective, and we seek solutions. That was good. That was good, and That was good. I need some more bread to go with that bread. <laughs> Let's get it. Um, this Pastor Orphan. Let's so let me ask y'all, fellas, when the last time y'all been to the barbershop? Wow. For real, Fred, this is a barbershop like, conversation. Wow, you know? Fred. Like, I so just you wanna, I just so put Fred, it out there. But wait a minute, Fred. You know I don't have no hair. <laughs> so, Fred, you hey, know. That's no <laughs> <laughs> that like a you problem. I mean, Jeff, you ain't got no hair either, but. <laughs> I mean, but you can still get a shape up, you know, your beard, your beard trim up, your mustache. Yo, yo, real talk, shape up is $20 now, bro. Yo, anything like you, Janelle's my barber. (laughs) Yo, it's inflation on the barber. Literally. Bro, Bro, because COVID, what was it? Like, what fast Joe say? He said, last year's price (laughs) is not this year's price. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? The prices went up. It's true, though. Yeah, I haven't been to the barber since... I remember exactly last time I was the barber. It was March of 20. March? 20. Wow. Wow. Because this was like right when everything shut down in New York. So I remember like my barber was like, this is going to be my last appointment. Or not like, like the last time I'm going to be able to cut your hair until we are able to reopen up. Because remember, everything shut down. I haven't been back since because, you know, for our listeners who don't know, I don't have any hair. <laughs> so Allegedly. I, you know, <laughs> so I was able to live without, without a barber. But you know what I'm saying? I do have a bib. And I'll be honest, I just kind of just let it grow out, but yeah. I have not been back since, even though I could if I wanted to, yeah. but part of it is because of COVID, yeah. fear of that. You guys know I am with that. But also too, because I, I, I just need a razor, cut my, you know, I can shave my head. I'm good. I'm That's good. good, man. Yo, bro, would you, you get so, so on hair? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> he is not playing. He is not wearing no wigs, man. He's not no doing. Way. And not in, nothing I'm not against knocking our listeners. Him if yeah. anybody does, yeah. For our listeners, but this yeah. kid right here, exactly. So would you judge me if I get one? Well, that's on you. Yeah, that is. Ah! I'm gonna judge you. I'm gonna talk right. about you up and down right. the street, but to your face. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go in too, man. You just know it. Bro, but I was talking to Jeff uh, like a couple of minutes ago. We were talking about like, there was like, we was like, bo- boys, we only got like three different hairstyles. We either ball, <laughs> we got a cut, a low fade, <laughs> or you got locks and braids. <laughs> locks and That's it. That's it. Sometimes you may have locks and braids together. <laughs> and bald. <laughs> and and bald. <laughs> On the top. <laughs> trust me, yo. Nah, y'all, y'all, y'all I've get, seen that before. I've seen it too. If you've lived in New York long enough, you've seen it. Damn, Word out. that's yeah. me right now. I'm like, yo, my man, how you, how, how you have dreads, braids, and, and you bald? Exactly. A baldy. You want it? That's called having it all. And, 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 and a little fade. Like, yo, I, I don't understand it. You know that's a saying? trifecta. That little, that little patch is like a little fade. I don't, I don't get it, son. The baby like, fade. I got alopecia. Yeah. I just the don't fumes, like... The thing I wanted to talk about, too, because it's like, I think... It's such a sensitive area with men and barbers. And it's like, when you guys did have hair, like, <laughs> that's not so bad. Golly. I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Derogatory. But look, I ain't got too many years Back left. in the day when you had hair. Back, no, how did it feel, Grandpa? No, but <laughs> let me ask y'all, how did y'all know when it was time to go to a new barber? Because I know that's a hard thing because you get used to it. 
And then, and then like, I don't know if there's like a, like, I think being with a barber is like being in an abusive relationship sometimes. <laughs> Cause you, no, honest to God, you could be like, fact. yo, man, fact, just sir. cut my hair. He go out and be eating a sandwich. He be like, hey, yo, you mind if I go argue with my girlfriend real quick? <laughs> then go to the bathroom, never come back. Like, well, hold on, I gotta smoke this blunt real quick. Exactly, <laughs> we gotta go do some hookah. Cause I seen that you before. Know? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've hold seen on. a lot of stuff. I'm like, no, damn, no. bro, you gonna smoke a blunt right before you yeah. cut my hair? I'm already yeah. like late. I mean, like, this appointment's already late. Like, come on, son. Exactly. That's I'm why at, I left my barber. I left my last barber because he was always late. Facts. And he was just like, and I had stuff to do, man. And he was just being disrespectful. He cut my hair high. It was just like a lot. It was a lot. It mm-hmm. was a lot. And it was, It took me a while because he was really, like, trying. You know, I wanted to believe in him for the... We would go through the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> it was a whole relationship. It was. Yo, was Pause, he, was he eating like a chopped cheese while he was cutting hair? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's doing a lot, bro. He done, he took a shot while he was cutting my hair. My, mine's just Aki and Sawfish. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he ate a whole, like, a, uh, rice, eggs, all his, like, a whole steak while he was eating my hair. I was like, well, he was cutting my hair. Pause. And, um, but it was just like, I don't know. It's it's hair is a big thing for I think our culture. Period, though, because mm. we we take so much time from week to week or day to day. We are always trying to figure out what to do with our scalp or what's on our face or what we wearing. It's a big deal of how we are perceived. That's a fact. You know, it, it really it really really is within a culture. You exactly. know, it goes all the way down to our music. You know, within that, um, Just and like hip hop, yeah, like hip hop, like hip hop is a culture that we've grown up in, bro. Like, like we, hip hop is our culture. It's uh, it's us. Started at a party in the early seventies. Where yeah. shout and, out to DJ Cool Herc, DJ Cool Herc in the, the Bronx, Bronx, South Bronx, in the Bronx, South Bronx, South South Bronx. If y'all don't know, a little like, known fact for those who don't know, you DJ know, Cool Herc was Jamaican. So exactly. So shout out to the yaddies. <laughs> He, he definitely had oxtail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what I want to say is like, it's so ingrained in us to know hip hop. You know what I'm saying? You hear a song come on, you had a function, you like, oh, snap, that's my jam. Like, th- like how many times you been at a party and you be like, oh, okay, they ain't playing on the music. I like, then they play juvenile. Everybody running to the floor. Everybody's ready to, you know, get it popping, you know. Or they play taking over for the nine and nine nine to the two thousand. <laughs> or they playing like a soca song. Or they playing like a Jamaican song. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> playing a they playing a Mexican cut suave thing. Like, like, like any couple of culture with hip hop, it's just something special because we were we were born into it. We we were around why. We are around why it's evolving. Wow. Now. So I, I have a question. When when did you fall in love with hip hop? What was the first? Mm. What was the what was that one hip hop song that you heard and you was like, "Yo, mm. I, I I think I want to indulge more into this hip hop culture." I gotta honestly say, for me, I'm gonna start this joint. Uh, when I heard Nas one mic, that was when I fell in love with with beats. I, it was that one. And when I hear her, uh, Tupac, when I heard, uh, uh, when he did, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the song. Why is it? Why am I hit blanking? Uh, no, nah, not hit him up. <laughs> First like, off. <laughs> no, when you I might heard. Might get violated for that when one. I heard, in, in, uh, in, this, in this coast. <laughs> no, <Nah>, I think, <laughs> I think, no, no, no. I think it was I Get Around. Okay. When I heard that and when I heard One Mic. Those were them two songs where I was just like, wow. Like, I... I love this. The mm. the way that they put words together. And it wasn't just putting words together. It was just the beat. Everything came together. Everybody's mm. verses intact. It was just like, it was poetry. Mm. And at the time, I'm like writing poetry. And I'm like, this is poetry right here. Like on a on, on a beat. And it makes music. And our, our people are creating this. Mm. What about you, Ant? So I got introduced to um, hip hop. I was in high school, so in that moment, Kanye was just out. Mm-hmm. So the old Kanye, um, and just the lyrics and just the flow and just the style, it, it was just hip hop. Um, so that was my example of hip hop. Um, at that point, as I evolve in life mm-hmm. and I begin to understand hip hop some more, I would definitely say Jay Z. 
Um, he embodied hip hop, oh. just a lyric perspective, just from an analogy, from a if you if you are an ELA teacher, just the way he just used words. Right. It was just such a powerful space. Um, it allowed you allowed yourself to enter in his mind. Mm. Like his analogies and how he was like, can I live? Yeah. And it's like, yo, someone is writing on the corner of Marcy right now. <laughs> right. And you feel like you did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're in London. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend of foe, state your biz. Ooh. Like, <laughs> friend of foe. Like, who is you? <laughs> Don't you ever, 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 ever come around here. Don't <laughs> You gotta say it, Jeff. You exactly. Y'all <laughs> yeah, know me. I'm the biggest Jay Z fan. I know. I'm, I'm a huge Jay Z fan. But for me, and this is me showing my age, um, I fell in love with hip hop when I first heard um, Run DMC with Aerosmith Walk This Way and also yeah. LL Cool J Radio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I remember being a young kid. Damn, you old. Yeah, that's what I'm showing my age, man. I remember being a young kid and like my cousin, he's the one that kind of induced me to hip hop. And I just remember being at his um at his crib mm-hmm. in Coney Island. And I don't think Hot 97 was even around back then. I can't remember what the radio station it was. But I just heard the song on the radio. I heard Run DMC first. Mm-hmm. And I remember hearing it. I was like, yo, I like that. And, and you know, at that time it had kind of more of like a hip hop rock feel to it. That was I like, think like their biggest ring. That's what put Run DMC into like this world-known household name, right? So I remember hearing, I'm like, yo, I like this. Like, what is this? And then I think a little bit afterwards, you know, I heard LL and it was like radio. And I was like, yo. And from that point on, I became like a hip hop head Mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it. So I was like, maybe like six, seven years old at that time. And no, yeah. Yeah, and I just, I fell in love with, I fell in love with the culture, the from the b-boying to beatboxing to like, you know, Rhyming. I mean, I wanted to be a rapper at one point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, no, really. Real talk. I mm-hmm. want to be a rapper. My yeah. first. Oh my god. Yeah, I really want to ask you to rap right now. Yeah. Nah, I ain't doing that. Yet. I ain't about to All right, what's your rap name? What was your rap name? So my first. Come on, <laughs> talk to us. Yo, and I did not come up with this name as a disclaimer, right? But my first rap name, I was 12 years old, I think, yeah. was um, Black Daddy Mac. <laughs> Used for a rap arena or porn. So, uh, I, Yo, I he, he was on the OnlyFans. And that's why I gave that this. <laughs> Yo, this is Y'all a good moment. I ain't gonna say it because you're a Christian. <laughs> you be careful. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that that was my rap name, man. Yeah. And then, like I had end up. Um, yeah. Then it changed to Assassin. And like, so me and my man, we had started a group we called MNMC, Mischievous Minds Crew. Hey, fire. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, you know, my name was Assassin and like, yo, we, yo, I used to get busy. Yeah. I, I used to get, I used, I used to get we busy. You can't get man. one bar from you? <laughs> yeah. Jeff, like, not today. <laughs> man, I ain't about to bash myself. <laughs> What's crazy was, Jeff, me and my boy, Daryl, we started a rap group in high school. Okay. And it was called Metaphoric Black. Mm. Uh, he his name was sophomore and mine was concept. Ooh, I like, Ooh, yeah, I like so, that. So that better than I, Black Daddy Mac. <laughs> <laughs> but but it just shows you though, know, as we went from pe- people who were on the sidelines in the stands to people that became performers because we want we wanted to indulge in it. Yeah, we yeah, love the culture that much, you know that we wanted to be. How many people I'm like say you know me. that just saw something and just really wanted to be a part of it like mm. that. You know, in that capacity, which brings me to like, like we've seen hip hop go through so many transitions in different forms, right? We had the era of hip hop that was the neo soul era, kind of like the '90s. We felt the beginning of the '90s with Souls of Mischief, with Con- Common, with uh, there was a lot of Brand Nubian, Brand Nubian, De La Soul, De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, Tribe Quest. Yeah, 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 that yeah. the groups. You know what I'm saying? And you know, this was when Erica Badu was tr- uh, touring. Let us not forget the Roots. Mm. The Roots. The Roots crew was is fire. Roots, mid 90s, the Roots. Yeah, hip hop band, first ever hip hop yeah. band. Oh, yeah. And 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 then we go to 
the other part of the 90s, the gangster era, where we was NWA and we get uh, Dub C and Corrupt and we get Snoop Dogg. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Tupac and, Biggie. Tupac Biggie, you know, and, 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 and then we like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Then we go into the early 2000s, which is like the crunk era. Like the South is rising up. We, we got a lot of groups. Trillville. We get uh, the, Nelly, the, the Little John. Snap your fingers. Do your step. You can do it all by yourself. DJ Unk. We get Soldier Boy. We get we get all these different people that are like we giving the we getting a beat and we getting uh, a dance right. Yeah. And then we we move into now, right? If you could describe hip hop now, how would you describe it? Like, what would you what would you call it? Because because like a lot of people would say mumble rap era. A lot of people would say it's just an era of like, uh, you know, nudity and songs about uh, having sex or whatever. Um, but how would you how would how, how would you guys describe this era that we in? For me, with this era, I would say it's just disposable music. Mm. And mm. and and the reason why I said because we're in the era now. I mean, it's, it's a couple of different yeah. factors. So I would say one, we live in an era where we have streaming service. Right. So we have like from Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. You basically have the luxury within your phone or any type of electronic device that you could doubt that you have access to these apps. Uh-huh. And you can listen to any kind of song. So I think because of that, a lot of artists, new artists or in this generation, it seems like they're just making records just to make records. Yeah. Um, they're no longer creating albums. They're just making songs. And it's like that song is just hot for that moment. Yeah. And then that's it. You know mm. what I'm saying? I, I don't really feel, feel like there's a lot of timeless records or songs that's, that's coming out now. Right. It's for that moment. Absolutely. And, and that's why I said disposable music. And, I, and I'm not saying that all artists that's out now are mm-hmm. like that. But right. I think like. It seems like this was the, the, the trend. And plus, there's so much music that's out. Right. It's hard to like just really just grasp to just one song and mm. like, and that's, that's your theme song for for that week or for that month mm. or album in general. You know what I'm saying? Right. You think about back in the day, we had albums and like that album would be like, that's part of our season of our life for that moment. You right. know what I'm saying? When you had, like, you know, with, with, with Tupac, with um, um, All Eyes On Me. Yes. With, um, Illmatic, you know what I'm saying, Nas. Like we would Anthony was saying with Jay-Z with um Reasonable Doubt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, Wu Tang 36 Chambers, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, low end theory, you know, Chop Core Quest, mm, Clips, Outcast, Lord ATL, Williams, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All these albums, like they played Black oh. Daddy Mac. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yo, um, <laughs> they played a season uh-huh. in our life and like it spoke to us. You know what I'm saying? You know, the Fuji's the score. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these, it, and it, I could go on and on and on, but I think nowadays, I you don't really get that too much anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it comes and goes. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Kendrick Lamars, the J. Coles, the Drakes, but you don't get that as much. I think really more it's just singles, and it's hot for that moment. That's yeah. why, yes. to me, that's why I say it's disposable, respectfully. Like I was saying uh, before we... Uh, before we got to this episode, I was saying like, yo, I feel like music now for hip hop is like, it's a microwave and not an oven. Mm, I um, because uh, I, I feel like they're taking the time, but I don't feel like they are really, really realizing what they have. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I just don't feel like they are really realizing what they have here, we, yeah, you got, I feel like you have all the opportunity, right? So many stages. You could, you could do like verses now. Verses is like a platform for, oh, yeah. for you to do con- concerts and stuff, right? It's, it's a part of our culture now. Shout out to the lots of dips at the yeah. best verses. I was hey, fire. The best verses ever to me. Um, but it's bringing back that love. It's being, and we can be in our homes and watch it, right? Mm-hmm. It's bringing back that love, like, cause what was the first thing, the first platform we ever had? Our radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Had one radio. Our CD player. Or, it, or was it in a bathroom? Where, wherever the radio was in your house, you had that radio. You could listen to it. Like I'm an old school kid. I, I used to uh, take a cassette tape, yep. and if I heard that song that I love on the radio. I would try to wait till it come on on the radio yep. and then record it. You say it all day. 
<laughs> waiting for that song to hit, like, oh, it, boom. And then you had to make sure that you ended at the, the right, right time. time. Right? And that was your, your mixtape. Exactly. That was an original mixtape. That's you know the original mixtape. Those are the original yeah. mixtapes. For real. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, let's talk about, like, what rapper do y'all think right now is the most intro, I said intro, influential ever? The most, the rapper right now that's the most influential. Currently right now? Yep. That's Meaning the most like influential. in every era? It can or be. Or just in tw- 21st century? I, I just say just right now, who do y'all think is running, running thing? The rapper that's most influential. I would say Drake. You say Drake? And tell me why. The reason I, he's the most, with, with, with Drake, he, he, yeah, he's, he's the most consistent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think Drake is like, the Jay Z of this time, right? right? Mm. Um, you know, Some big he, words. Yeah, and, and, he I'll, is, and, he and, is, and I'll be honest, is, I'm is. not a huge Drake fan. Like, I don't really go out to listen to his records. I think he's dope, mm-hmm. but I'm just not a you know, just not a big Drake fan. Yeah, but I do, but I recognize greatness and success. Right, you know what I'm saying? And he is like when he drops, it's a big deal. Yeah, you know what I'm the saying? world stops. The world stops. So mm-hmm. for me, and and he. This is how big Drake is. Right. And, and I think for a lot of artists, what separates them from being as big as Jay-Z or Drake is that they could have not only club records, mm-hmm. but they have records that you could, you know what I'm saying, that you could play at home mm-hmm. or even in the streets. And right. just, Drake is not a street rapper. Right. But dudes in the streets are going to listen to Drake. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, I, 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 and especially, especially, I can't remember who would say, I was watching an interview mm-hmm. and they were saying like, you know, yeah. You can make these type of gangster records. Right. But what about the ladies? Because those are the ones that's going to these clubs. Those, those are the ones, ones that are buying gonna be those buying. records. Those are the ones mm-hmm. going to these concerts. Mm-hmm. So with Drake, he makes records where the ladies love him. So which makes him that much more bigger. He may not be the most lyrical artist. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, he, 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 he got bars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But because he gravitate to the ladies, that's mm-hmm. what made LL so big. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, compared to like Rakim and Rakim is one of yeah. the GOATs. He's, he's in my top five. Right. But that's what made LL much more of a popular, bigger artist yeah. Yeah. because he gravitated to the ladies. Right. Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? He had records where the ladies, ladies love Jay-Z because mm-hmm. he had records that, you know what I'm saying? That's that so they, they could dance yeah. to. They can rock out to you in a club. You throwing a whole record. They are going crazy. Right. But unfortunately, like Nas, right. You can't do that with so much with Nas. And Nas is also in my top five. Yeah, but he definitely in mine. You're not gonna get a lot of Nas records that plays in the club. Right. So to kind of circle it back around with with right now, currently, that's why I say Drake because like he could make all these different type of records. Right. And he, he he's basically touching every single type of crowd. The la- the ladies. The guys, you know what I'm saying? It because it plays in the club. It can right. bump it in your car. Right. Whatever it is. So I would say Drake. I just want to add on and internationally. Internationally, yeah. most definitely. So one of the, one of the things we gotta always remember is it, we're not just United States, we're a whole world. Right. And once you hit that international scene, right. It's a different story, man. Oh, it definitely is. is. <laughs> I must say a different ball game. Uh I'm not gonna say the obvious that was in my mind. I had to think even more levels, and I have to think of longevity, right? So I think the most influential rapper to me is a step above your guy is Lil Wayne. I'm going to say Wheezy because uh, you got to look at generationally where he started. He was just doing ad-libs on tracks with um, the Hot Boys, right? He was just doing ad-libs here and there, and he he had raps, right? And then he grew it. He grew, he grew Young Money. Grew it, grew it, grew it, grew it. And he's the reason why a lot of people rap the way they do now. Look at the Young Thugs, Lil Uzi Verts. Like, all these kids, these plants that are coming from the South mimic his style. Mm -hmm. All of them. That's true. All of them. All of them are his sons. You know what I'm saying? The mixtape era. I can't tell you what Southern artists had other than, like, let me say, uh, A-Ball and MJG, the stuff that they had put out in the early 2000s and a lot of the uh, mixtapes they put out. Wayne had the mixtape game sewn up completely, verse for verse. Nobody wanted to get on a track with him. He's been on tracks with Jay-Z. He's been on tracks with Eminem. He's been on tracks with everybody you can think of. He did a tra- a song with X X Tentacion before he died. Yeah. Like, across the board, oh, Barack Obama mentioned him in a speech. How, how do you even, uh, you know what I'm saying? That I'm talking about world. 
Drake is big, no lie, but who does Drake model? Who Wayne. who signed Drake? Wayne. Before everybody else, like Wayne was that one. Drake know he can get on the track, but if he get on track with Wayne, ain't nobody, <laughs> ain't nobody listening to Drake no more. Yeah, they okay, cool. You did the chorus, whatever, that's cute. But the lyrics, like I ain't gonna lie. Let me tell you, I was not a Wayne fan before when I was in high school. I did not like Wayne. Everybody else liked Wayne. Everybody was on Wayne. For days, fireman. Everybody's like, fireman. F -f 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 I was like, I don't like that. I hate it. You know, I tried hardest, but it was just the the intricacy and the simplicity. Like, like, like he could say a simple line and like real G's move in silence like lasagna. Come on, son. <laughs> like, son. <laughs> In silence, like the G in lasagna is silent, my guy. We know this. He can say something so simple, and I'm talking. And, and and intricate rappers want to be able to do that. No, intricate rappers wish they could say something that just simple, right? So, who to you, Anthony, is the most in intricate? So I, I was going back and forth, um, and I was thinking about internationally. Um, I would say Kendra Lamar. Mm. Um, K-Dot. He is... People are waiting for his album to come out. Um, but mm. this... This is wordplay, man. It's just beautiful. Mm. Um, and just him being a a rapper, but also an advocate for just the power of black men. Mm. Um, I think that's so powerful with Butterfly. Um, just his word of his... You looking at yourself as a human being, mm -hmm. um, but doing it in regards of lyrically. Mm -hmm. um, I feel to myself, and I think what's one thing that, that Jake does amazing job mm -hmm. is his consistency. Right. Um, and that's why we don't talk about Kendra Lamar, because mm -hmm. we live in a 30 second type of society where it's like, you could be hot now, yeah, but you might not be hot two days um, after that. Right. Um, so I would definitely say Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Um, but hopefully once he comes out, yeah, he'll be consistent. But, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Um, as as we're speaking about these three amazing, you know, artists, and we and we're talking about how we've seen the transition from hip hop and where is it now? And you know, what artists you feel really in, that influences this current generation. But my, so my question to you guys is, do you feel like hip hop lost its culture? In a sense, I do. Uh, in a sense, I do. Because if we think about the five elements, right, which is b-boying, it's DJing, it's uh, breaking, uh, it's um, uh, what, MCing and graffiti. And, and um, I think I might have said one of those twice. But um, it doesn't have to be that incomplete because if you look on a smaller scale, a lot of people are still doing those things, those items like in the cover art of their albums, they're doing graffiti. Right. And um, then you think about the dances that they create through songs. Right. Mm -hmm. And the DJing part of that. Uh, people are still DJing because, you know, if we look at verses uh, that brought that back, DJ D nice. Uh, started those parties where he would be DJing all night long. So, uh, and versus brought back the love for concerts and being in, in 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 the room with your favorite artists. Um, but I think for now, we're lost kind of like the element is that that we miss the anticipation of buying an album. We don't have that anymore because like, do y'all remember going to the store? Like I remember the first album I ever bought. Was Lord Willing by the Clips, uh, the best one of the best albums I've ever listened to. Not because I bought it with my own money, but because it was literally legit, beat for beat, for real. Completely produced that album, and Pusha T and Malice are like lyricists, right? Complete. And I'm old. Yeah, but because I'm thinking the first album. Which one I you bought? <laughs> MC Hammer, please don't hurt him. Ah! <laughs> That's the first album that uh, I bought. Man. That's serious. That's serious. No, uh, but if you think about it, like we don't have that. We can go to our on our phone, look at the streams. We play the song probably once, twice, and then we'll be like, okay, what's the next thing? Mm -hmm. You know, 
I, I don't feel it's like a fast food. It's not it's not a cooked meal. Like and we just like remember, I just remember it was work, bro. Going to the store, uh Circuit City, we were talking about like that's not around anymore. Uh, and you can go there and listen to your favorite album, listen to oh, tracks, yeah, snippets. Remember, yes, yes. You, that oh, was that go, that that gave yeah. you that love for music. You're like, damn, I might want to buy this album. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can put your put your piggy bank out, pull it out, and be ready to purchase. Right? Yeah. You we invested in music. I don't feel like we're invested in it anymore. Remember, like I feel like it's just a drive by. Yeah, it's definitely a drive by. And for me, like I was thinking about it, I, I think we are cu- the culture. Hip hop is the culture. I don't think we lost it because it's it's so wide, and hip hop from at this moment is a billion dollar industry. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Yeah, so absolutely. if it's a billion dollar industry, that means that the culture is still there, mm-hmm. um, and people imitate it. People want to be it. People try to be it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what is going on is that there's a different evolution of individuals. I always say this, this is a different avatar um, of individuals that are listening to hip hop, that love the streaming, love the 30 second, because we're now living in, and I think Instagram did this. I'm blaming the social media Mm -hmm. where they created these type of individuals that they want that fast food, everything is fast food, relationship fast food right. music got to be fast food absolutely um mm-hmm. spending time got to be fast food absolutely so it's like they created this one time thing right. where it's like okay and companies know that right A&Rs know that yeah right. big album release people they know that mm-hmm. right and what happened is they're going to give it to you so they're going to bring down the baby but then going to bring him back up mm-hmm. Because why? They want to be a part of it. For example, when we're going through that um, in 2020, you saw how, how many companies right. were trying to say, okay, I'm for Black Lives Matter. I'm for this. How many people were the voice of Black Lives Matter? How many hip hop stars that he wanted to talk in, in their, in, for their company? Mm. So we are the culture, right. but it's when they want it to be. So let me ask you this. And since you say we are the culture, do we still control the culture? Definitely not. See? And, that, and that's and, the thing. And, 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 and that's why I was asking that that's question initially. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I agree with your point. I agree with Fred's point. I think it's a combination of both. I think hip hop has lost some of its originality and essence because we don't control it as much anymore. You know what I'm saying? You know, we do have gatekeepers like Jay-Z and Diddy and, 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 and Dr. Dre and some of these others who do try to preserve the culture as much as they can. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the record, these record labels, they control what goes out, what music you want to put in. And, and I, we was having this conversation prior to we started this, this recording. And, you know, shout out to our engineer, um, Ernest. And he brought up that I didn't even know. And though this is not really hip, a hip hop situation, but it goes along with it. Mm-hmm. Is we're talking about music soul child, right? And so music soul child, he has a record called Love, which is w- one of my favorite music soul child records as well. I'm a big music soul child fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just found out that originally that was not the title or the word Love was not the original record. It was supposed to be God, mm-hmm. right? Lord. And Lord. or Lord, sorry, Lord. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but the record label told him. You can't use that. Mm -hmm. You got to remove that. So he changed it from Lord to love. Mm -hmm. So here again, like though Music Soul Child is an R&B artist, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He got a little hip hop flavor to him because he's done some records with some hip hop artists. Absolutely. But it's how the music industry, people who's not really of the culture, how they kind of control it. Like, you know what? Hey, yeah, it's a nice record. Right. But we're not pushing that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You're going to push this out. So to me, what it reminds me of, unless you own it, mm. you're not going to be able to control it. Jay-Z said that that's, all the time. You know that's true. It, it, that's it, true. It, it, exactly. You're basically going to be a slave to what they want you to do, to their decision. Like, hey, mm-hmm. you're going to put out this type of record. Mm-hmm. You're going to put out this type of song. This is what we're going to push. Right. This here, nah, it's nice, but no, nah, we're not We're not doing it. We're not feeding the masses because we want what's going to be acceptable to the public or what's going to make us money. Absolutely. And that's why I feel like 
hip hop has lost some of its essence uh-huh. in, 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 in a way because right. we don't we don't really control it like that much anymore. You I, know what I'm I think, think too, yeah, I think, uh, do y'all think religion is used as a prop in hip hop? Most definitely. Mm. Most definitely. I, I, I definitely think so. I so, think that- So um, good, so good. But religion, and it, it it's- it's crazy because it could be controversial. Like you'll have like, you know, you know, we can, cons- we're Christians, you know, we consider ourselves, you know, a, a, a Christian podcast. Um, but we're a Christian podcast, you know, that we talk about various different topics. You right. know what I'm saying? But we do know like in some churches or some beliefs, they don't really believe in like you listening to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. They look, at, they look at secular music. Right. And so if you listen to secular music, like you had like Kirk Franklin for an example, when yeah. he first came out, a lot of gospel Christian based people, they were not crazy about because Absolutely. he had some type of hip hop flavor to him and he would remake records, hip hop records, but make it more of a Christian based type of song. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. and that that caused issues with a lot of like Christian folk. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We're going to keep it a buck. So I, I I think like, you know, when it comes to hip hop and, 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 and gospel music and a lot of these hip hop artists, they grew up in a Christian household. They went to church, you know what I'm saying? But they adopted this culture called hip hop because that spoke to them. Right. Wow. Hip hop speaks to the people. Absolutely. And, 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 and in some ways, if we're going to be honest, you know what I'm saying? That it spoke more than the Bible to some people. Because mm, if you know what I'm saying, that's a fact. You, yeah, if you if you're living yep, in poverty, that's a fact. Hip hop gospel. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop gospel. If you're living in poverty and, and 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 you're seeing like all these things going on, and yeah, you're going to church on Sunday, and yeah, you know what I'm saying, you know, you know, you're hearing the word, but you're hearing um Ice Cube, you're hearing Biggie, you're hearing Jay-Z, you're hearing Lil Wayne, you're hearing all these different artists, and they're talking about what goes on in their life that speaks to you because that's what you're seeing that becomes your gospel mm, you know what fact. i'm saying and so now this hip-hop becomes your religion right and it's, it's speaking to you more than the scriptures that's in your holy bible right if we look at back to uh something we were Great talking point. about before was that like if we looked at christianity and hip-hop right when i was younger and people was like, oh, yeah, here's some Christian rap and everything like that. I'm like, man, listen to that whack stuff. Like, I, don't, I didn't want to listen to it because I really, I was keeping it separate. Like, you know, church and state, like separation of the church and state, because I was just like, I felt like hip hop was this thing. And then I felt like Christianity was a different thing, you know, and now seeing so many artists, uh, namely uh, one of them is Kanye, like implementing Christianity in his music. Um, it's very interesting to say the least, but I feel like you take a challenge. I mean, you take, um, a risk when you try to combine, um, something positive that's light Mm. and something, and then combining it with something dark, Mm. you know, it's, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Cause Mm. you could have a Christian record, but then somebody's cussing on it like which is something that's completely opposite from what you could be trying to do which is in it's interesting but at the same time it's just like but what are you trying to achieve but i think um they've merged hip-hop and gospel together where there's no cursing yeah Yeah, no they have there's a lot of records there's a lot of records or like let's say you you do it where there's no cursing but there's some symbols like that are on your album that don't represent Christ. Yeah. You know, or things that where you're making yourself Christ, you know, because sometimes people want to be an idol, you know, hey, I'm the next American idol or I'm the next person up that I want people to look at as God, like you know, be. which is something that the word talked about, um, of like how people will create their idols. Yes. You know, hey, look, uh, look there, there, there's so many tribes in the Bible that tried to create their own mm-hmm. their own gods and be their be and be God to so many other tribes. So in this conversation, are we saying hip hop shouldn't be a part of church or should they put be a part of church? No, I'm saying you can put hip hop and church together. Okay. I've seen it done successfully, definitely. And it doesn't have to be deemed Christian rap. Like, no, chance the rapper does it. And it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. 
I think he's a phenomenal rapper. I love what Chance does. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, there's so many other people that do it. I love Lecrae. I love uh, does amazing job. Uh, yeah, yeah Tri dope. Trip Lee. There's uh, so many other like rappers that are Christian that like, and some people have questions. Kendrick. I love what Kendrick does because he's going, he's going through things. You you mm -hmm. hear it in his music. You hear it in his voice. It's a fact. You know? And like, like he was like on his album, a concept where he was talking about, he's like, the evils of Lucy is all around me. And he's talking about Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And so I love when people play around with like their relationship with God and, and talk about their relationship with God in a certain context, creatively speaking. I'm not saying cussing and then you talking about Christianity, like, oh, you shouldn't do that. No, I mean, I'm like, okay, if you're sorting through your relationship, know your goal with that track. You know mm. what I'm saying? Look at DMX. Trying to reach. DMX. Yeah. DMX. You DMX say, right. After every, Good point. every album he has, Good point. the last track is always a prayer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is always a prayer. And he talked about all the time, like he is a Christian. You know what I'm saying? He grew up in a Christian household. He yeah. went to church, but he dealt with real life situations. Yeah. Right. So it led him to obviously talk about mm -hmm. robbing and killing and all these different things. Right. But he's also a Christian. And then he would balance it out with these prayers at the end and even yeah. before his concerts. Like, remember, I think I talked I talk about this in the previous podcast where I remember I went to the Hard Not Life tour and I remember DMX at the end of his set praying. You know what I'm saying? And he prayed and he had like everybody in the arena crying. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, in that arena, people who came to the concert, not all of them were Christian. Some were probably Muslim. Some probably were, some probably were you know, atheists. But he had everybody crying because you just felt the energy you right. felt what he was saying you you actually felt the, the presence the essence of god in it so i think with hip-hop like hip-hop is it it is the culture and it's right. a culture in the sense where it has transitioned to where we could adapt and bring hip-hop even yeah. into our christian life right. because you do have a lot of hip-hop artists who are christian or you have christian artists you know what i'm saying that listens to hip-hop and they embody that into their um their music cuz you know what I'm saying with hip hop it's it's universal exactly. you don't only listen to it here in United States like you were saying early on all it the goes world. all the way from Africa to to Australia to 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 wherever you know what I'm saying there's a lot of old school artists from naughty by nature to um you know method man method man red man they still tour 200 out of the 365 days out the year across mm -hmm. overseas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So hip hop speaks a lot. So you have artists who are do that do speak on being a Christian or or God in their music, conscious rappers Absolutely. from like common, you know what I'm saying? You know, as, as well, conscious, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of those type of artists as well. And they speak and they they implement that. You know what I'm saying? So I think there is some form of balance in there. Um but I, I I do believe that you know with 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 hip hop like it's 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 a culture that speaks to the people. Mm. It, no matter how you want to look at it or dissect it, it does. It speaks to the people. Right. It's the voice of the people. So with that being said, let me ask y'all: Who's y'all top five dead or alive? Let's get to that. But let's do a disclaimer. I want to make it more interesting because there's common names that always comes up. Okay, right? the Jay Zs, the Nas, the Pox, and the Bigs. So. I want your top five dead or alive without naming those four artists. No Jay Z, no Jay Z, Nas, no Nas, no Kendrick, no J Cole. No, no, no. You can put J Cole in because when you hit top five, those are like the most common names okay. that's on there. You know, the J, Nas, Biggie, and Pac. Okay. okay. Outside of J, Biggie, Pac, and Nas, right? So those are like givens from from okay. most. Because I want this to be. I want to hear interestingly, like, what is your top, top five? Fizz off. I started off. We can't put Drake, right? You can put whoever you yeah. want. Just, okay. Just, just no, no J, J, no Nas. Nas. They already solidified. Big Big oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We already know. All right, here you go. You wrote uh, it down? Hey, hey, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so here we go. Andre 3000. Uh, Black Thought. Uh, I got Jada Kiss. Uh, Most Deaf. And then I got to, if I had to... Put one more person on uh, that totem pole for greatest rapper. I would put Kendrick on there. I love Kendrick Lamar, man. Okay. He's phenomenal. Yeah, I and 4D. 
So this is the guy that um don't really listen to hip hop. I'm a reggae, <laughs> but I, I'm gonna say my top five. My top five is definitely Kendrick Lamar, um, Tory Lanez, Drake, um, Little Dirk, and as well as mm, that's one. Money bag, yo. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. So again, I'm gonna show my age. So for me, it's Rakim, L Cool J, mm-hmm. Karis One, mm-hmm. Ice Cube, mm-hmm. Scarface. Scarface. You know what's crazy? Oh. I got them on Mount Rushmore, so I don't never put them in oh, my yeah. top five. I Who never put them in my top five. I got them on Mount Rushmore. I'll, I'll be like, oh, y'all want to know my top five? But not the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> My fault, Jada Kiss as well. Jada I don't Kiss. mention this kiss too, Jada Kiss. Kiss, he just needs his flowers. Everybody yeah. gives kiss his flowers, but what, bro. Let me ask you another question real quick, though. What album, what hip-hop album that really changed everything for you? Blueprint. Oh, that's fire. Fire, fire. Blueprint. Um, For me, dang, it's hard. Uh, because it's a lot. It's a lot of them. I want to say, uh, yeah, okay. I'ma just go with it. Uh Stillmatic. Stillmatic. Definitely. It's, it, it's one of them albums that just like it came out when I was in high school. And like I was just like blown away. Cause that's one mic, bro. That's either. That's man, that's so many tracks on it. I I I could go on. But that that literally changed the way I look at hip hop completely. Mm. Yeah, that was that album. For me, I would say it. it I go back for between these two. It's Illmatic mm-hmm. and Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Doubt. Yeah. Those, 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 <laughs> those, those, <laughs> those, See, I know why I liked you guys. <laughs> those two You're albums, my brothers. Man, like, they, yeah. mm-hmm. man, like I just yeah. remember when I first listened to those two albums, and it's what it what it did, man. Yeah. Like absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like I think. As a Christian that listens to hip hop and everything, it's not separate. I mean, I am a hip hop head and I'm a Christian as well. Like, I think all, I think hip hop can go forward in, in, in a great direction. I think we just need to care more about the music. Yeah. We definitely have to just care about more the about the art. But yeah, as an art, that's what I'm saying. Like, it ain't like, and I don't care if I make a billion dollars or I don't care, you know, yeah, I do wanna support my family, but I do. Uh, I I do want to support my family. I want to take care of everybody. But like, let's get back to that art. Yeah. And you know, yo, once again, another. I was about to drop a hot sixteen. Real quick. <laughs> oh. I'm just joking, I'm just joking, I'm just joking, <laughs> Okay, okay. Wait, 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 Black wait. Daddy Mac in concept. Let's go. And I did it. <laughs> Lyrically and physically, I get busy. You know what it is, yo. Check out my committee. This is top shelf. Yo, check yourself. You know what it is, yo. I'm fresh to death. I'm the MC of all. They call me the assassin. I'm on this microphone, yo. You know I start rapping. Look at Fred, yo. He's down to my left. I told you right now, yo. I'm fresh to death. You got my man, Anthony, yo. My Jamaican brethren. Come on, man. Yo, check out my confession, but this ain't Usher. You know what? <laughs> No more, yo. Yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price. Oh, did this matter? Let me see. Oh, we does. <laughs> yo, that's how she applied, Gab. Yo, keep on listening. Yo, 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 yo. I want to give a shout out to my baby mama, Sabrina. Yo, I'm coming home soon. I want to give a shout out to my boy Anthony, my boy Alex. Yo, I know you getting out soon, bro. Shout out to my boy Jeff, aka Big Black Daddy Mac. We, we out. We out. We outside. Word of my mother. <laughs> yo. <laughs> Yo, Top Show Podcast, man, where we give our true opinion and perspective. Yo, we just having fun here, man. Yo, go listen to that top five. Go listen to your top five and let us know what your top five is, all right? Yo, we outside. <laughs> <laughs>